Hello everybody, my name is Dalton Nelson and today I'd like to talk about a game I just beat. That game being Cthulhu Saves Christmas for the PC. Cthulhu Saves Christmas is an RPG developed and published by Zeboid Digital Entertainment. Back in 2018, I decided to pick up an RPG I had put down years before that. And that RPG, Breath of Death 7, I ended up really liking. So, wanting more, I played the game that came bundled with Breath of Death, Cthulhu Saves the World which I ended up loving. In fact, it was my third favorite game I played in 2018. From there, I started following the works of the developer, Zeboid, a two-person independent team that has a style that they're good at achieving. Their most recent game before today's game, Cosmic Star Heroine, is another title I enjoyed. I saw Zeboid evolve their style and mechanics into something completely new for them. And while I don't think it's perfect, it's certainly worth playing. Which brings us to Cthulhu Saves Christmas, Zeboid's most recent work released last month. A follow-up prequel to my favorite game of theirs, I was pretty excited to join Cthulhu and friends again, in another game. And, well, disappointingly, I think Christmas is the weakest Zeboid title I've played thus far. And there's a few things that contributes to this. Let's start at the story. Cthulhu wakes up on Christmas Eve, with a present from Santa on his table. Cthulhu opens the present to find a dark mist that steals his powers away. Angry, Cthulhu swears revenge on Santa and travels to the surface world to find him. As the story goes on, you find out that Santa has been kidnapped by a league of evil Christmas figures. This is where the story for me starts to feel unfocused and repetitive. In classic Zeboid fashion, the characters of the story acknowledge their video game existence and thus, Acknowledge that they'll have to be each League member to find out more of where Santa is being held. This would be fine, but I don't think Zeboy does anything meaningful or funny with this. Each new section of the game feels like you're going through the motions and gets less and less fresh. Every setting feels like it's laid out the same way, and each boss of the area, while sporting some great designs, don't offer too much diversity in how you deal with them. Zeboid tries to break up the RPG dungeon crawling in the game by putting in these relationship building segments in between dungeons. Where you're given multiple locations you can go into in this Christmas village. Once you pick a place, Cthulhu will go to said location, and there will be a mini story that will play out, showcasing Zeboid's trademark writing. When the story segment is over, you'll be rewarded with a new piece of gear for your party. Real quick, you get a lot of equipable gear in the game, so much that it can be a pain to sift through it all and find the best stuff. I wish Zeboid implemented a sorting feature so I could see what I got recently, what stats are the highest, etc etc. This relationship building is much like the hub ship segments from Cosmic Star Heroine, but I think improved slightly. I like the segmented stories and overall streamlined approach. The only thing I wish Zeboid had included with this mechanic is a way for the player to tell how often they visited a location, as well as a quick blurb on what took place before on their last visit. This way, the player can have more of an investment and grasp with the numerous options at their disposal. Speaking of relationships, normally each Zeboid title features an ensemble of colorful and wacky characters, but here in Christmas, they actually try their hand at a more traditional, rigid, four character party system. I think Zeboid's ability to make memorable party characters still succeeds here, with characters like the Goody Goody Crystal, the Chicken Loving Baba, the Candy Crazed Bellsnickel, and the Evil Cthulhu, all of which are in top form here and bounce off each other fairly well with some good writing. Although one aspect of Zeboid's writing that I feel didn't quite reach the mark was their humor. It's mostly the same fourth wall breaking humor I've come to expect from Zeboid, but for some reason a lot of it fell flat for me. It does deliver in spades, but I think a lot of it is just stuff we've seen before from Zeboid. This familiarity also carries over to the battle mechanics themselves. A lot of what was going on in Cosmic Star Heroine crosses over into Christmas. You have a turn order in the top right corner telling you who goes when, and each character has 8 abilities they can choose from to attack. Once an ability is used, it's spent. It can only be used again if the character uses a recharge ability. Christmas changes things up a bit by having the three ability slots at the bottom of the UI be randomly loaded from the character's pull of abilities whenever they recharge or at a start of a battle. This means the only static abilities are the four that are on the top. 
I like this change. It keeps the player on their toes. Another big change to the battles are that they're based more off of status effects compared to Cosmic Star Heroine's focus on attack types. Enemies can be weak to poison, stun, disarmament, vulnerability, and charm. There are some attack types that do carry over, mainly fire, ice, ground, and air. Insanity also makes a comeback, with the added functionality of swapping the enemy's primary weaknesses. I didn't quite get how Baba's chicken meter worked. The character Baba has a percentage under her health, telling the player how much chicken value she has. I honestly don't know or never really figured out what having more chicken does. Couldn't figure out how exactly it helped me. But overall I feel these changes greatly improved the combat, making for some more engaging and balanced gameplay. In fact, these mechanics make for what I thought to be Zeboid's most challenging game yet. But that doesn't mean Zeboid doesn't throw you a bone when you need it. If all of your characters die in combat, Zeboid gives you the option to start the whole battle over again. So that you can employ different tactics in your fight. Outside of combat, there is now a bar that tells you when a fight is about to initiate. Zeboid also put a battle limit in each dungeon, where if you exhaust it, nothing else will come after you, and you'll get an experience bonus for clearing the entire area. Speaking of the areas outside of combat, the sprite work for this game is absolutely beautiful. Everything is so detailed and lovingly drawn, it's impressive. The only thing in terms of looks that I wish was handled differently is the enemy designs. A lot of them look like they would come right out of Cosmic Star Heroine with the sci-fi fantasy influences they have. It's a Christmas game, so I wish they were more Christmas themed. The same goes for the soundtrack. A lot of the music is very epic and layered, but it sounds like it would come out of any RPG. I wish there was more Christmas themed instrumentation and compositions thrown into the mix here. And that does it for all I have to say about this game at the moment. I like the game overall, but was disappointed nonetheless with what was delivered. So I'm going to give Cthulhu Saves Christmas a final score of a 6 out of 10. I'd like to reiterate that my disappointment is personal. I have seen others praise this game higher than I have. So if this looks like something you may enjoy, definitely consider picking this up. That concludes my review of Cthulhu Saves Christmas. If you like my reviews, you can like, comment, or subscribe. I also have social media links down in the description below, as well as a link to my portfolio and a link to my backlog profile. And with that out of the way, please make sure to have a great day.